So today I'm going to give you a full build tutorial for three different round build designs in Valheim. Now this is a slightly new type of video for me, so if it is something you'd like to see more of, please do consider liking and subscribing as it is an excellent gauge of the type of content that people want and I'm more likely to make more of it. Also, if you have any questions, please do let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. But for now, let's have a look at what the designs are. I have put chapters into the video, so I'm going to show you each of the designs and then you can skip ahead to the design that you want to see in case you don't want to watch the whole video. So first up, we have the most basic of roundhouse builds, and I really like this one because it's fantastic as a starter house design, which is what I actually used in my Ravenheim video, and I wanted to do the full build tutorial today because this is a really good way to get started on your round builds. If we head inside here, you can see that there is a reasonable amount of space inside, uh, definitely big enough for like a bed and a few early game chests and that sort of thing, plus you can cook your food and all of that good stuff. So next up, we have the biggest of the builds that I'm going to show you today. This is a very big round house as you can see room inside for lots of different things as you can tell by the roof there we're also able to vent out smoke and have a hearth or several hearths if you wanted to inside so that enables you to do a lot more cooking and uh, you know basically just have more room inside for furniture and all that kind of stuff if we head down inside here you can see got the dark wood doors here so we've got a nice big space there that we can have for doors and windows if you want to add them and i've done a bit of decoration inside just to give you a bit of an idea of the scale of this thing and give you some other options of decorational things you can do now today's video I'm not going into the decorational side of the builds, just how you actually build them. But if you want to see some decorational build videos, like for example here, we've got things like the deck chairs and the robes and things like that, then I would definitely be keen to do those sort of videos if that's something you guys want. So again, if that's something you're interested in, let me know down in the comments. But this just gives you an idea of the size of this build and also uh, you know shows you some things that you can do, some options you have for decorating it. So this right here is the third design and it looks a little bit like two round huts uh, together, which it, it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> but instead of just making two round huts near each other and building a tunnel, if we actually go inside here, you see these are all connected up on the inside. So you've got a shape basically like the number eight. And uh, it's just an another idea here of a type of build you can do something a little bit different for your Valheim worlds and does come into the round theme. So I thought I'd include it. So to build this first design, what you need to do is start by just placing down a wood floor piece like this. Then using your middle mouse button, you can just do one rotation and it should be placed like that. Now if I zoom right in here, you'll see how this snaps perfectly on. And if we go to the next one, we get it perfectly level. We do one click on our mouse, get it snapped in again. And we do this the entire way around until we have completed the circle. So as you come to complete the circle, you'll see it looks like this. And with one little click there, it snaps on both ones. So it will snap to both this one and this one here. And there we go. We got just about as close as you can get to a nice circle in Valheim. After that, you can, of course, just go ahead and fill in the floor in between so that you've completed the floor. And when you place this down, there will, of course, be some overlap with the floor. But when it's finished, I do think it looks quite nice still. And you can't really tell when you're playing the game that you've got those sort of overlaps. I think this looks okay. And that is how you complete the circle. Next, you want to go ahead and place down your walls. And you can place these walls as high or as low as you like, because essentially the circumference of the circle is obviously not going to change no matter how uh, high you make this Y value. So when it comes to doing the roof in a minute, which I'll show you how to do, you can make the roof the exact same way no matter how high you make these walls. For the sake of this tutorial, I am just going to do uh, the normal one high wall, or I should say you know, the two high wall if you like, but uh, we're not going to go any higher than this level. So again, we're just going to go one click each time and it should snap to the wood floor below it. Uh, in the same way that we place the floor though, just one click each time until we go all the way around and complete the circle. So then you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. And at this stage, we want to start on the roof. And for the roof, you're going to use the thatch 45 degree roof here if you're copying my design. So uh, what I like to do is start here and then again we're just one clicking the same as we did with the floor and the roof and it will snap onto the walls and we go the entire way around and complete the circle in this way. So at this stage you'll have a roof that looks a little bit like this and sometimes this sort of roof can actually be kind of cool and you could stop here depending on the design but to continue on with the design that I was doing what I like to do is find these sort of straight bits of wood here if you know what I mean the ones that are not at all clicked they're sort of perfectly at 90 degree angles and I like to build one on top of there come around and do one on the other side. And if we get this correct, then you'll see that these two will touch on the corner up there. We then go and do this on uh, each of the four sides. So you can have four placed down in total, just like this. There we go, snaps on there. Then for the uh, diagonal bits, basically from this position here, if we go one click, 
And then we come over here, we go one more click. So basically it's like two clicks and there we go. So I'll show you that again. So for perfectly level with this one, if you click it twice like that and then come and do like in between the center here, you see these little gaps either side, um, but they should be about the same uh, gaps either side. So again, from here, two clicks, come up and place it down on there and the final one here. So then you'll have the roof pretty much done at this point, which you need to put a top on it, and you'll have these little gaps. Now I'm gonna talk about those in a second, but first just to say here is now it's time to put in your door. So there we go, we can go ahead and put the door down. We do this uh, in this way, because it's a little bit easier to place the roof on top of the uh, wall pieces rather than on top of the door piece. So now it looks like this, and again, you could leave it here if you wanted to, and you could maybe put a fire in the middle of your build if you wanted to do that and vent the smoke out here. Uh, if you wanted to do that, all you'd need to do is uh, go ahead and take out the middle piece here, just like this, and then you place your fire down on there like that. So this could have uses in different ways, and the smoke will vent up out through there. Um, of course, when it rains, it will get rained on, so you may have to like extend the chimney up and stuff like that. But just giving you guys some ideas here outside of just showing you exactly what I've done, in case you want to do something a little bit different. If you are copying me though, here's what you need to do. Go ahead and get yourself a little floor piece like this, and you can actually place this uh, before you run up, so you can place it down like that, then run up and stand on it just like that. Now what we're going to do is get ourselves the thatch roof 45 degree ridge and just snap it on like that. You should find it snaps reasonably simply and we can destroy that wood piece and come down here. So at this stage, you do have a roof that is entirely functional. It will protect everything underneath it from the rain. So when you're in here, you will see these little gaps. I personally kind of like them. They let a bit of light through and feel kind of authentic. But that being said, if you do want to get rid of them, you can just go in and sort of patch up the roof here and just snap in like more points basically onto the roof. It's a little bit fiddly to do and in my opinion, not necessary, but I wanted to mention it as an option in case you want to do that. So the next thing to do is uh, make a little chimney area here and this is to ensure that you can sleep inside this house if that's what you want to do. Now you can take out any single one of these wall pieces so if I just look around and go there Okay, this one, I'm gonna take out this one, uh, just to prove that you can literally do it wherever you want, which is kind of a cool thing about this. Go ahead and place your fireplace down and then uh, we'll build a little chimney around it. So literally all we need to do is put a wall here and a wall here, so either side of that piece that we just broke down. Then what I like to do is place these pieces in here, so one there and one just there, with again the thought, excuse me, 45 degree roof that goes in the middle there. Uh, like that. Okay, great. So this will now protect it from the rain whilst ventilating the smoke outwards. And that way, when we're actually inside our house here, we got the chimney, we got the shelter, as you can see there, and the comfort. So you could now place a bed in here that would work. So for this larger design, let's first talk about the area that it will take up. And what you're going to need is 11 of these stone pieces. So an 11 by 11 square, essentially. Now, if you use the large wood floor, it's the same size, so you can use that to measure if you want. But basically, you're going to need 11 of those in this direction and 11 in this direction, basically making that, as I say, 11 by 11 square in order to build the heart of this size. So in terms of getting started on this heart, here is what you're going to want to do. Start by making a 3 by 3 of wood, and this will be the floor. So we're going to go ahead and put those down just like that. So you've got this little three by three, and this will be the dead center of your build. Now, if you're like wanting to make a little note of where the dead center is, you could take this one out if you wanted to, or so otherwise mark it. Sometimes I just find it's handy to know the center of your build. So just a side note there. However, you're going to be sort of noting this anyway, because the next thing we're going to do is use these big log poles. So we're going to put one of these on each of the corners, just like this. And these are going to be needed for the foundation in order to hold the roof up, as it is quite a high roof, and also to make the chimney thing that you see. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is place Place one, two, and then three like this. And we're going to do that on all four of these poles. Of course, if you're in survival mode, you need to use scaffolding to do this. I'm just doing this in cheat mode to make it a little bit faster for this video. So once you've got that three by three, the next thing to do is to get some of these sideways poles and just connect them along the top here. So you're going to basically make a square of these between what you already have. This is going to give you a nice strong foundation and also allow you to better place the roof later on, as you'll see when we get to that part of the video. So then you'll have something that looks like this. And at this stage, you want to go ahead and and get one of these ones out here, the two meter log poles, and place one of those on top of each of the four corners, just like that. Now this bit is actually done for now, and we can come back to this later on when we build the roof, as we'll see. But now let's get back into building the floor. So here we are, we've got our three by three that we built earlier, and the next thing to do is build out four in any direction. So for example, I'm gonna come here and build out four of these. So one, two, 
three, and then the fourth one's gonna go right up to the edge here, just like this. Now, what we're gonna do from here is build the perimeter, because once that's built, it's much easier then to just build the infill. So to build this perimeter, what you wanna do is place a block here like this, and one there like that. So you basically got three of these large wood floors all together like this. Then we're gonna do one click, we're gonna snap it on just like this, and place down two of those. We can do another one click, snap it on there, and place down another two of those. One click again, snap it and place two. And then for this one, this is where we do three again. One, two, and three. So there's a couple ways you can know when you're at the bit where you do three. First of all, you're now gonna be in line with your three by three that we built earlier. And second of all, this is sort of like diagonal, whereas I consider this to be straight. If you know what I mean, where you've got in the game, you've got the four directions that like to be straight. So you've got like this and this. I hope this is making sense, like I'm building here, you know, in this sort of direction. Um, as soon as you start to use your mouse wheel and turn it, you can sort of tell when something is diagonal. I I hope that makes sense, but I'm also gonna show you one more of these so that hopefully you can follow along at home and get this right. But again, we do one click, we snap it and we build two. One click, snap it and once again, build the two. One click, snap it and build the two. And then we know that at this stage, we're gonna build three here just like this once again in line with the original three that we built over here. So then we're just gonna go ahead and build this the entire way around until the circle meets up. And if you've done it correctly, once you get back to this way, when you place those final two on, it will snap to both this one and this one, so it's done perfectly. And there we go, that is our circle floor just like that. So at this stage, it's kind of up to you because if you're going for a different type of floor inside, like if I was doing a stone floor, I could potentially leave it at this point and that we've got our perimeter marked out, but you might want to infill it with wood, which is what I'm going to do for how our design looks but yeah just thought i'd mention that if you want some stone areas or some dirt areas or whatever you want to do obviously it's up to you at this stage so then you'll have something that looks a little bit like this all filled in with wood and our floor is done so the next thing of course is to build up the walls and we're going to use the wood walls for these now in the design that i did i actually made them too high before i started to do the roof now once again you can actually uh, do this any height that you want theoretically but you might need to change around your log poles and things so i'm going to go with the design that i went for today the one i showed you just earlier and we're going to go for these two high like this here but I just thought I'd mention that you can of course make it different heights depending on what it is that you're going for. Now if you want to do the doors like I did I'm actually going to talk about those just before we do the walls but either way I recommend that you do the doors first this time. So in the previous design we actually did the door at the end this one we're actually going to do it first. Now if I want to have two doors that are central and here the way that I do this is I get the one wide wood wall like that and one wide wood wall like that. I should say this is because I'm using the dark wood gate doors, which I do think look rather nice for this build as it is a larger build, but this means they will then be centered. So if I go through here and just open these up really quickly, and when we come back through here, this is now right in the center of the building. You can, of course, place the door wherever you want, but if you're following the same design as what I did, then this is what you want to do. Now, at this stage, what we're gonna do is go ahead and place these uh, one wide wood walls down here, just like this, and the same over here on the other side. And uh, then I'll show you how to do the rest of the wall, but that's basically how we do the doorway that I did. So if we're just placing the wall, essentially you're gonna snap it to these wooden bits. So whereas this one would be sort of like this, we'd go one click and then we'd snap it here. And of course, we're gonna do two of those then one click and snap it again. Basically the same as what we did for the floor because the wall is of course following the floor. So we go over to here and once we get to this bit, we place down three. So it should be nice and easy to do. So long as you place your floor correctly, you're just following this around. So what I recommend you do is go ahead and do the whole bottom line first. Then you can come back and do the top line. And it's a bit easier because you can just snap like this, as you can see here, as you go along. So it makes it a little bit easier to snap to and just speeds up the building process a little bit. So with the bottom layer done, it'll look something a little bit like this. And then of course, we're just gonna go around here and finish off building up the top layer until we've got those two layers done. So then you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. Of course, it might be slightly different if you had a different door for yours, or you might also want to put in some windows in yours. I didn't put any windows in this design, but with it being too high, it does lend itself quite nicely to including windows if you wish. So now it's time to get started on the roof. And the way we're going to do that is start off with the 45 degree thatch roof here. And it's always easy to start at these straight points, I find. So we're going to place one, two and three down like that. Then we're just snapping for this first ring to every single one of the wood pieces that we've just placed down. So you see there we can snap onto each one of these and it makes life reasonably easy to do. Uh, do. Of course, if you're doing this in survival mode, again, you will need to do scaffolding along, which is the thing that's gonna take more of your time. Uh, but at least when you're up there, it's quite easy for this bit because you're just snapping to each of the wood wall pieces as you go around. So go ahead and do that the whole way around and then I'll show you what that should look like. Okay, so now you have something that looks a bit like this with the roof going all the way around in a circle. Now, the next bit, what I like to do is get to the center point again. Now, when I say center points, I mean the sort of like from the three we had in the middle, I mean this point here above the door, this point right here, this point, oh, just a little water saving there. Okay, so this point in here, 
and this point in here. Hopefully you guys know what I mean by those center points, the four sort of cardinal directions. So what we're going to do is go ahead and place down three on top of each of these. Now what I find easier is to actually go and do those first if you're able to. So we're going to place one, two, and three here because it's going to help you with the spacing when we do the in-between bits, which I'll come on to in just a second. Incidentally, when you're doing this placing down, it's very easy to place the roof here and think that you've done it correctly because it feels like it snaps on. You see here it's like loose, loose, loose. There it's snapped on. But as you can see, this is actually in between these two pieces right here. So do make sure that when you snap it, it is perfectly above just like this so that it is literally snapped and exactly in line with the piece below it for these four cardinal directions. And then you'll have something that looks a bit like this. Okay, so for the in-between bits now of these sort of corner bits, if you like, here's what you want to do. Go ahead and snap it like this. Now this one here, you can see, let me zoom right in. We are now in between this piece here and this piece here. So unlike the cardinal directions where we wanted to snap it exactly, for this one here, we're not snapping exactly like that, but we're offsetting it a little bit. Now, how do you get this right? Well, you see there how that's just touching up the corner. You want it about there, but then just go in slightly. So basically, once it's done correctly, that's the gap that you have, this little triangle. So if I show you again, like over on this side, let's go ahead and look at that. So that's the gap. That one right there is a triangle, but you can see it's too big. So you want the little triangle gap just like that. Place that down. That is going to be the way you're going to do that. Then we're going to go an extra click like this. And we're going to once again snap it. So let me just get this into place. And this one we're going to snap perfectly above that one. And this one we're going to snap perfectly above that one. So I'm going to show you this again in just a second. But this is what you'll have from the inside. From the outside, this is how it looks. So let me just get out of fly mode a second so I can show you this a bit more stably. So if you're trying to follow at home, this will be a bit easier. But these are the two little triangles that you see in here, okay? Now that one's almost a little bit hidden, but you sort of see the size of it on this one a little bit better. Now, this doesn't let any rain through, so everything under here is still gonna be protected. And it, I think it's quite nice aesthetically because it lets a bit of light through as well. If you really wanted to spend the extra time to like go ahead and just sort of like snap these perfectly, or not sort of snap them perfectly, but you shift to place them perfectly, to cover all of these holes. You definitely could do that, but I really don't think it's necessary, so I didn't do it for my build. So let me go ahead and show you this one more time. So from basically from this direction here, we're going to go, like if that was perfectly in line there, we're going to do one snap like that, or one click, I should say, like that. We're going to come over here to where it snaps to a small triangle, not the bigger triangle, the small one, just there like that, and place that down. Then we're going to go over to this one. Again, that would be it perfectly. We're going to go one click in this direction, snap so there's a small triangle. And then we're going to go one more click just like this and snap perfectly to the two in between. So that is how we do the roof for the corner bits. I'm going to go ahead and do the other two and then I'll show you the next stage. Okay, so now you have a roof that looks like this. And say so from the outside, you can barely even see the little gaps that we left. And when we go inside, there are a few little gaps here, but personally, I don't mind them. But guys, I'd really like to get your feedback on this. If you hate these little gaps and you think that a round roof should be completely enclosed let me know in the comments because perhaps i'll do a follow-up video that talks a bit more about round roofs and some other options that you have with them anyway for the next bit of this roof here's what we're going to do i'm going to go ahead and get our roof again so we're still on this the 45 degree roof the whole way through and what we're going to do is once again snap it to the cardinal direction so one two and three there perfectly snapped above I'm going to do this on all of the four sides, just as we did with the previous layer. So then you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, for the next bits of the corner, here is what we're going to do. So if we come along to, let's say, this one here, and we are now with our roof perfectly in line with that, let's go one click in this direction and come over to here. And you can see we can snap this sort of perfectly. So let me just really get into this so I can get a good view for you guys. But you can see there, like, you can really snap this in so that it actually covers the roof. But there's two ways of doing this. So one way is like here the other way is there and you can see the difference between these two so basically this one here the first one you sort of more over this one below right here right so you sort of snapped onto there if you go slightly to the right it still snaps and comes out there now this isn't going to make a huge difference to your build but there's gonna be a bit more overhang if you do the one further to the right and i'll show you what i mean so let me do this one here place that one there. You can see here is just a little bit of extra overhang. Now this is really getting into finer detail and being a bit fiddly and probably either a fine, but I like to be thorough when I do these sorts of videos. So what I wanna do is snap it there, okay? So not over to the right, but there, the first one. We're then gonna come over to this side here, and once again, we're gonna snap it and we're gonna get it in nice and tight, not out there, but in there. Then we're gonna do one more click like that and snap it in between the two. And I've placed that in the wrong spot. Let me just get this done again. Okay, so then you've got something that looks a bit like this, right? And so for the inside bit here from here, we go one click in this direction. And if we shift down, 
we can get this placed just about right. So we'll shift it and we placed it there. So you do have to use shift on that one. You're not snapping it, you're gonna shift it and you have these two little triangles either side and that's how you know you've followed what I've done correctly. So let me show you that again so that if you're following at home again, this is hopefully gonna be easy for you. So we're gonna go one click like that. So from here, one click, there we go. Uh, and then we're gonna snap this on, but we're gonna get nice and tight snapped on. So there, we do the same over on this side, right? Get it snapped on. And let's see, there's nice and tight. And then in between the two right here, we just wanna get a uh, shift down. There we go. So we get about an even triangle on either side, just like that. So if you've done it correctly, you'll have a little triangle on each side. And that's how you know it's roughly in the right place. I will say with round building in Valheim, it's not traditionally the way you build in Valheim, of course. So when you're doing these round builds like this, there are gonna be some sort of minute details that don't snap perfectly and don't fall perfectly in line with what you maybe were hoping to do. My advice is not to worry too much about that. You're gonna get this as round as you can. And to me, hey, it's an authentic Viking build, all right? They probably couldn't build in perfect circles back then. Maybe they could, but let's just not worry about that too much. <laughs> so now your roof will look a little bit like this. And we're gonna do one more stage before we get to doing the roof any differently which is uh, how the top bit looks so it's that little bit difference so we're going to go ahead and go to the cardinal directions and once again we're going to place down these perfectly snapped to the ones below now at this stage you'll see that the roof has now gone green again that's because we're snapped onto these log poles right here which does provide extra support for the roof from this point onwards so once again we're going to go around to all of these so you can see there we got from red to that being green and that being like, well, it's still red, but it, it, it holds up. <laughs> so we're gonna do each of the three on each of the four corners or four sides, I should say again. And uh, let's go ahead and place those down. So do be careful when you snap into these because uh, with everything we've done below, the snapping isn't as obvious. So do make sure you're not here, but you're actually here, right? Snapping it correctly. Just take your time on these bits and get them right. And there we go. So now you'll have this right here with these big triangles. Now, if you wanna cover these triangles in a bit, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go in like this. And in fact, I'll probably do this from the inside because I think it's gonna be easier for you guys to follow what I'm doing. But you can see this piece right here, we're just gonna to snap to it. So we're gonna to snap to it there, just like that. And you can see that it leaves again, a roughly an even triangle on each side. So we're gonna do it again, perfectly snap to this piece right here. Boom, goes up to there. And again, these log poles are providing that extra support so that this roof is gonna stay on. Let's get it snapped there. And the final one in this corner right here, and if I can get that snapped onto there. Okay, so this is how the roof looks at this point. Now you have options at this point basically because uh, you can do what I did, which is what I'm gonna show you how to do. But some people, you know, you might wanna leave a bit of a gap at this point. It just depends on what sort of the build, uh, you know, what you're using it for, I suppose. But um, if you're gonna do what I did, then let me show you how we do that. Okay, so this roof is very simple and you can do this in one of two directions, which I'll show you in a second. First thing to do is to grab this one here, the wood beam at 26 degrees. Get it perfectly snapped on just like this. So let's get in nice and close so I can show you what I mean. There. So that's what you want it to look like. Do the same over on this one. Then turn it around opposite like that. So let's make sure that's in the right spot. Yep, okay. So again, snap it perfectly there and perfectly onto there. And finally, what we're going to do is use this one right here. So the roof cross that is again 26 degrees. Place that one down in there and that one down in there. Now the final thing to do to complete the roof is to grab the uh, thatch roof 26 degrees and fill in these bits in here like this. Uh, on there. On there. I, I think I accidentally placed a fourth bit there. You can do this in three. Let me try that again. Okay, so thatch roof 26 degrees, one, two, and three, there we go. And then of course come around the other side, do exactly the same thing, one, two, and three, just like that. And finally put the little hat on it as I like to think of it. It's the roof ridge at 26 degrees and place it down like that. Now what this does is, if you wanna put a half down in the center of your house here, which is kind of a nice thing to do, I think, but basically this will protect it from the rain while still ventilating the smoke. And if we come back and look at this build from here, I think it looks kind of nice like that. I mean, you guys may disagree, feel free to let me know in the comments, but I think it just adds something a little bit different. So this is what it looks like from the inside now, and it lets in quite a lot of natural light. So I said about how I didn't do windows, you don't necessarily need to have them because a lot of light will come through the little cracks in the roof and the big crack up top where we're ventilating the smoke from. Of course, you can put windows in if you want, but I found that, you know, time, uh, excuse me, time I got my hearth in here and a few torches and things, we were pretty good. And as you can see, you've got a reasonable amount of space in here. You could have a pretty decent bedroom set up and a workstation and all that sort of stuff. Now, in terms of the decorating of this, you saw earlier in the video what I did to decorate that. Um, this isn't something that I'm going to go into in today's video, uh, decoration specifically, but I have an upcoming video on my channel where I will be talking about decoration options and coming up with 
with hopefully some very unique ideas of how you can decorate your builds in Valheim and build different things like the deck chairs and the uh, swimming pools and all that sort of stuff that uh, you saw earlier on in this video and that I want to add in as like little decoration additions for your build. So if you're interested in seeing that decorational video, please do consider subscribing to stay notified about that. You can also join my notification squad, which is in my Discord. Link is down in the description. And then you'll get a ping every time I go live on YouTube and every time I release a video on YouTube. Okay, so this design starts the same as the first one, really, where we place this down like this, and you're going to go ahead and do one click in place, one click in place. I'm going to keep doing that as we go around like this until we complete the circle, because that's the best way that I can show you during this tutorial. We are going to need to delete a couple bits in a second, but it's still sort of worth doing. So let me go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, so as we come around, we'll just keep on on with one click in, and then it should snap perfectly between this bit and this bit, same as we did in design one. Now, what we want to have here then is a bit of a walkway, right? So we want to have like a way of getting through. And and you can do it like this, where you just place down the two like that, and this will be the little walkway through here. Um, but what I find you want to do is basically where this starts to come around here, get rid of that one there, that one there, and that one there, right? So get rid of those three pieces. Then what we can do, if we get the floor here, we know roughly this is where we want our walkway to go. So from here, it would be like that. Rather than snapping it around this way one click, we need a one click this way, like that, and then another one click and place it like that. Then we'll come over to this side and do the same thing. So again, instead of going that way, we're going to go this way. And we're going to snap it like that. Another one click and snap it just like that. There we go. Okay, so once you have something that looks like this, go ahead and do a one click and place that there. A one click and place that there. And then do a one click in the other direction and place that there. One click and place that there. So it comes out the same distance as this one here to make the circles equal. Then from there, we're going to go one click all the way around just like we did before, snapping on each piece until we get to the point where we're going to complete the circle. So when we come around here like this, all we need to do then is put a bit in there just like that. And this is the sort of shape that we get. So we've got that kind of double circle shape that you see here. Of course, at this stage, what you can do is go ahead and just fill in the floor in between so that you've got your wood floor placed down. Okay, so at this stage, you want to go ahead and place down your wall and we're just going one high with this. Again, you could go high if you wanted to, but for my design, that's what I did. So again, we're just one clicking all the way around, but essentially what you're doing is you're just snapping it to the outer wall, uh, sorry, floor piece here. So you see these floor pieces, we're just snapping it onto each one of those. Now, when you get to this middle bit, you can see here things get a little bit tricky. So what I want you to do is just go ahead and leave that for now and then come over to the next bit here all right so you leave these like funny bits here go around to this bit and do it the whole way around so let's get rid of that on a second that was in the wrong spot so we can snap it on just like this there we go and it's probably easier to start with these straight bits but yeah you just one click and go around like that and i'll show you how to do the middle bit in a second but go ahead and place this down everywhere else apart from those middle bits so we're coming around like this we place this down here this down here we miss all these middle bits now it might be easier to just go straight in line there and do that one there snap that onto there, snap that onto there, leaving that middle bit, and then complete the wall around here. Okay, so then you have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, you have some options at this point, because you might want to try and put the door in this middle bit, right? It's kind of a nice way to enter in, and you've got two different ways you can go. So if you want to do the door, then I would suggest that you go ahead and place that down in the center, just like I've done there. Then you can go ahead and just snap these pieces on here. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, essentially, if you do it like this, uh, just get this snapped correctly, and get that onto the bottom one. There we go. You see that it comes right up to the door, right? It doesn't leave any gaps or anything like that, but it also doesn't overhang. So I think that looks quite nice if we do it that way. And one, one more time, I'll show you on this one. So basically, you want to get that snap in. I think it's actually easier to do it from the inside. You can kind of see. There we go. Snap in like that. Now, if you're not doing a door, that's fine as well, of course. You might want to put the door, you know, in one of the circular bits. For that, what I suggest you do is just snap that piece on just like that. Snap that piece on just like that. And then put the bit in the middle there and put them on top. So you can use these smaller walls to give us a bit more flexibility in this bit, just like that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll uh, show you how to build the roof now with one side having the door and one side not. And hopefully then you'll be able to figure that out no matter what design you're going for. So for the roof, go ahead and get the 45 degree angle roof again. And I suggest you start on uh, one of these points here, just like this. And to start off with, what we're going to do is just go around like this, one clicking and just snapping onto the bit of wall that is below it. So we can do that all the way around until we get to the center bit. And then uh, we're going to leave that. So that's going the last piece there. I'm going to leave this center bit and come back here and go around this way. So it's easier to do it this way around and then do the center bit at the end. So with that side done, we're going to go ahead and do the same over on this side. Again, just snapping it to each of the wall pieces that we have already built. So then you have something that looks a little bit like this. So for these uh, middle bits here, how do we do the roof? Well, what we're going to do, go ahead and grab the eye corner of the thatch roof, the 45 degree, of course, and you want to line it up with this one right here. Okay, so we want to get that lined up just perfectly in line. It's going to be a little bit fiddly to do, 
but basically about there. There we go. And we do the same over on this side and get that there. So you see it creates this little triangle shape like this. That's how we do that. So I'm gonna do the same over on this side. So I'll show you a couple of times in case it's tricky. So that there, see it snaps nicely on. There we go, just like that. And on this side, snaps nicely on, just like that. Pretty cool. Um, so now you've got some options at this point because uh, I actually think this can look kind of nice, particularly if you're doing the door here. There's a little entranceway and a little like bit of roof here like this. But what you probably want to do is cover this bit in the middle. So one way we can cover the bit in the middle is to go ahead and grab this, the thatch roof, 26 degree. And if we put that on there, you see it snaps just about perfectly. Now, if you're trying to get it where it's like straight like that, it's a bit difficult. But if you're happy to do it diagonally like this, then it does snap on quite nicely. It will work as a roof and it gives a bit of a quirky look to it. Now, as I say, you might want to just leave it and have the hole there. Another option you do have, you can put a floor piece on there because it actually fits perfectly. So if you want to do it that way, you can. Um, and then, you know, you've got options with like snapping this above it if you want to. So to do the straight one, if you do the floor piece first and then place the 26 degree on top, then of course you can get it a little bit straighter. The other thing to say is at this stage, you could, if you wanted to then take out that floor piece, just like that. So that's an option that you have and it will look a little something like this. Now if you want to fill the uh, middle bits in here you can then use this one right here the thatch roof over corner 45 degrees and place that one on there like that so then it's sort of like this little overhang where the door is which looks quite nice. Okay so to finish this roof off go ahead get your 45 degree roof go to one of the straight bits and snap that one on just like that. Then for the other bits uh, you're going to snap them too and just make sure that they're just about touching the other bit. There we go and there we go. Now we're only doing three of these so they're going to go there like that. Okay, so do the corners, then you want to go in, so from here, you're going to go in one, two clicks like that, place it down the corner, two little triangles there, again, to show that you've done it in the right spot. Again, from here, one, two clicks, there we go, like that, and snap it on there, and then do the same on these bits over here. So snap one on there, and one on there. Now, to get this little bit here done, what we do is get up onto the roof, there we go, and grab the O corner once again, there we go, and boom, snap it in just like that. And finally, we can put the 45 degree hat on it and you can do this in like whatever orientation that you want really. So I might just go ahead and place it like that. And the reason I'm doing it that way is to sort of match with this here. I think if we have all three in the same direction, it just makes them look a bit more matching and a bit more, uh, you know, nice. Uh, so then we're gonna do the exactly the same over on this side. So let me do that and I'll show you how that should look. And there we go, with that done, this is how this one looks. And uh, of course, as I said, you can have the door in the center bit here if you want and you can walk in and you've got this nice sort of uh, funny little shape roof really going on in here. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could put the, the door literally where you want really just come up to any of these one pieces get rid of it and place your door down there we go snap it on in there so you can enter and exit the building wherever you want to do that but uh, that's just some options for you and this is how it looks inside so a reasonable amount of space i think it's kind of a nice thing where you could have like a bedroom on one side maybe a bit of a workshop and that on the other side of course the options are all up to you so there we go guys three roundhouse build design tutorials in today's video if you like today's video please do consider liking and subscribing for more but for now i just want to say thank you so much for watching and of course here come the dad jokes what's the oldest shape in the world a circle. It's been around forever. How do you stop a baby from crawling around in circles? You nail its other hand to the ground too. How do you know circles are smart? They all have 360 degrees. Do you know the roundabout was invented circa 1920? Why are circles the most useless shape? They're pointless.